Hello and welcome to Omics Logic. In this video, we will go over the data science training program further and look into how you can use various resources to deepen your understanding of biomedical data analysis, visualization, and integration using machine learning. Some of the highest paying jobs and interesting ones are for data scientists who can extract meaningful insights from biological data. In other words, you can take your understanding of the biological processes and apply it to novel drug discovery, diagnostic methods, maybe improvement on different processes. And so as scientists are looking deeper into these biological processes, they are requiring computational analysis skills to extract signal that is relevant to the type of question that they're trying to ask. And so in this program, we wanna take some examples of such projects and illustrate how machine learning and data science can be used to address some of those questions. Some of the projects are going to be around diagnostics and cancer biology. Other ones will focus on single cell and tissue compositions. And other ones will talk about the microbiome and infection. Now, all of these data sets are sourced from the National Center for Biotechnology Information that layers this information from extracting knowledge all the way to the raw data. The knowledge really represents the important findings that researchers have already found, but it relies on a body of evidence, and that evidence contains raw data. So taking the raw data, including over 15 petabytes of raw data from sequencing, we're going to look at how to use that kind of data and actually see what are the specific patterns, what are specific relationships, and different types of biologically interpretable signals that we can find. We also have about 100,000 of public data sets of gene expression omnibus, in other words, process, structure, tables of gene expression levels, and we have over 6 million annotated genomes. That means we have a lot of information of where did this uh, information come from and how to map it to some kind of biological function. Now the data, the raw data that we're going to be talking about can include many different types of omics data. That can include phenotypic information, which is typically annotated in some kind of a structured format, but also comes from raw data, sometimes images or clinical information, it includes genomic data that can contain variation at the DNA level, individual mutations, or frequencies of mutations. We'll look at epigenomic data, which can include DNA methylation and histone modification. And a lot of it will be about transcriptomic data, which is expression levels of genes, isoforms of those genes or transcripts, including exons, introns, and other things. So when we look at all of these different types of omics data, for all of them, you have to understand the specific ways that this data can be prepared for analysis to be able to ask questions, find associations between phenotype and genotype, or the molecular features associated with clinical or biological conditions, and how you can then use this information. So what does this information mean? What does the link mean? What does a specific feature associated with a condition mean? How do we actually use it? So that's what this program is going to be all about. We'll try to cover some of the analytical methods that are useful for processing, visualization, and analysis of complex biomedical data. We'll talk about the terminology of machine learning and artificial intelligence in biomedical discovery. And then we'll also talk about some of the project examples where you can see how machine learning was used effectively to achieve meaningful results. As a result of going through this program, you will be aware of the data wrangling and exploratory data analysis in this kind of data. You'll see the overview of different types of statistical methods and machine learning approaches according to the application that you would like to use them for. You'll see different types of coding environments, including R and Python, but also different tools to facilitate the exploratory analysis to make it reproducible. And then once you look at these case studies and different types of omics data, you'll understand how some of the steps are going to be exactly the same, depending on what data it's going to be the same initial steps. And some are going to be specific. So in other words, you have to link biology with the data side of things. So that's why this specific data science training program is really to help you understand various types of omics data, 
learn about exploratory data analysis and the steps for processing data and preparing it for machine learning, try some of the big data analysis tools for large-scale project data, and try machine learning models in the context of biological discovery, and then look at the link between biology and data and master biological interpretation. So let's look at the syllabus. The syllabus is organized into three different parts. There's going to be a part that is dedicated to introduction, a second part that's dedicated to a review of methods. The first part is going to kind of give you a crash course on terminology and key concepts, both in biology, in omics, and in the specific types of machine learning methods and methods for data preparation. Then we'll talk, take a look at the methods themselves. What do they actually do? How do they work? What do they mean? And what kinds of assumptions do they have about the data that they use, including some of the settings, inputs, and outputs that we're going to be looking at? And then how are these methods actually applied and used? So what are some case studies? What are some examples that we can learn from to see the limitations as well as the opportunities for machine learning for this kind of data. We'll look at examples with a large number of samples and a small number of samples with high variability or very controlled experimentation. So we'll look at all of those kinds of variables and try to link it all together into a satisfying experience. Now, the typical way that we do these programs is we combine interactive sessions with self-guided study materials. What that means is that you can join the session and kind of gain an overview of a particular topic. But if you really want to go deeper than that, if you want to study and learn and understand it on your own, you will have to do the work in between the sessions. So going to those practical steps will help you gain the most out of these interactive sessions. So let's take a look at some of these topics and try to go into a little bit more detail about what each one of these will cover. So the first part is we're going to do an introduction. So the introduction is intended for those that don't quite know what this means. Maybe you have some questions. What do these terms mean? What is genomic data and how is it different from transcriptomic data? What are we studying when we have metagenomic sequencing data? Maybe you don't know exactly what is raw sequencing data really look like. Or maybe you don't know what is the difference between clustering and random forest. So those are the topics that we will try to address in the first part of this program. Then we're going to go into the different categories of machine learning. What are they and how are they used? How do you use it to explore and understand data structures using unsupervised machine learning? How do you train a model and what kinds of models are there with what kinds of assumptions that then you can use for classification or regression? And then we'll also talk about feature selection and gene signature construction as an example of biomarker discovery or specific types of patterns that really help understand the model and understand the accuracy and reproducibility of the results in a particular training data set that overcomes the overfitting and uh, helps us understand the generalizable principles of a particular uh, model of how the model is trained and how it learns. So then we'll talk about uh, regression and generalized linear models, network analysis, deep learning, how to combine different methods together. And we'll talk about it both from a use case perspective. So in what sense is network analysis useful for time series data? How is it useful for one sample when we talk about biological interpretation? We'll talk about how generalized linear models are used for actually processing data and give us accurate results from this complexity of sequencing. And how can deep learning be used to improve accuracy and decrease feature engineering that a lot of conventional machine learning relies on? After that is done, we will start talking about projects. And these projects could be clinical, or they could have an industry perspective. So obviously, they could also have a basic research example as well. And so what are some of the project examples that we've prepared? We have cancer macrophages, different types of endemic or pandemic uh, outbreaks that we will look at in terms of the data and how that data can teach us about the specific outbreak or the virus that we're looking at. We'll take a look at modeling cancer precision medicine, how we can 
identify specific biomarkers, types of patients, as well as their response to treatment. We'll look at the complexity of tumor growth and microenvironment, and we'll also touch on some of the other projects that you can find relative to biotechnology, agrobiology, and environmental sciences. But overall, you will see the full process of going from experimental design, understanding what the researchers were trying to do when they generated the data, to then processing that data and preparing it for analysis, understanding the patterns, understanding whether it fits the assumptions that you have about the data, to then statistical in-depth analysis or mathematical modeling as well as machine learning so that you can manipulate the data in such a way that it answers a particular question and what that question is and how it can give you results that you can infer some meaning from, you can generalize, you can understand, you can actually find something useful in that data. At the end of all of these different sessions, you will get a certificate of completion. So the certificate of completion will be under your profile. And to make sure that your profile is ready for that, you have to have your full name. You have to have a brief description of your uh, background, which you can add under your profile on the learnomicslogic.com portal. On one side, you will have the big data analysis platform. We'll introduce you to a lot of the methods very quickly. On the other side, you will have the Omics Logic portal. There you will find all the training materials and the resources that you need. Now, in terms of this introduction to machine learning, the portal has a specific collection of courses. These courses are organized by topic, and the ones you want to start with are Introduction to Bioinformatics in R and Python, Bytes and Molecules, and then BioML. Now, inside the training courses, you will have exercises which break down the syntax of a code, and they also take a look at different examples with testable results. That means that automatically you get feedback. Is this the correct way to run it or incorrect? And you can also modify them. After you have learned and you have understood how the different pieces of the code work, essentially your goal will be to create a Jupyter Notebook. You can use Google Colab or install Jupyter Notebooks on your computer and then create a repository in GitHub where you have your process data that is prepared as an example that other people can find and reproduce your results, your code in a, a notebook that has both comments and the code that is executable. And that is something that you can use to actually show the outcome of what you have learned in this program. So I'm excited to get started. Hope to see you all in our next session.